the scientists here in Cambridge are going to scan my brain. In particular, the activity in this portion, the premotor cortex, that's the part of the brain which gets the body ready to move when you move your arms or your legs. And they're going to ask me to imagine playing tennis in my head. Okay, folks, if you'd like to come here. Okay, Fergus, we want to see what your brain looks like when you're imagining playing tennis. So you will hear me say, when you hear me say the word tennis, imagine that you are in the middle of a tennis court and you're playing with an imaginary instructor, okay? Tennis. Okay, Fergus, how are you doing in there? Okay, we can see that you're playing tennis very hard in there, very good. In the next scan, we're going to ask you a question, and we will ask you to respond just by imagining playing tennis. The question is, do you have any children? When I say the correct answer, you imagine playing tennis. When I say the incorrect answer, just relax. So as you can see, there already is activation exactly in the part of the brain that he was using earlier to play tennis, right in the middle. So he's saying yes, isn't he? He seems to be saying yes. It's pretty clear, yeah. Okay, so we have a guess. We, it seems to us that you've played tennis every time you wanted to say yes. Is that correct? Correct. Fantastic. So this is a 3D reconstruction of your brain while you were in the MRI machine. In this case, this part of the area in the very middle of your brain is green because you were trying to convey a no answer to the question we asked you. In this image, as you see, the very same part of your brain is now yellow because you were trying to convey a yes answer to the question on whether you had any children. This extraordinary technique has huge implications for patients who are only apparently in a vegetative state and could be used to involve them in their future treatment decisions and even whether they want to live or die. Uh, this was a patient who was uh, admitted uh, in one of our collaborators institutes in, in Liège in Belgium um, and he had been in a traffic accident five years ago and was presumed to be vegetative for five years. And what we did is we developed a technique that allowed him to convey yes and no responses by modulating his brain activity in the fMRI scanner. And what sort of questions were you asking him? Well, I mean, it's very early days, and the important thing was to get the technique right because, you know, it wasn't clear that we really would be able to do this in, in a patient who behaviourally was vegetative. So we asked exactly the same questions that we've been asking healthy volunteers as we've tried to get the, the technique right. So it's things like... You know, what is your father's name? Things that we could independently verify later on to make sure that he was answering the questions correctly. And what success did you have with him? We had 100% success. It, it was actually very straightforward for us to, to determine correctly when he was trying to convey a yes or a no just by changing his brain activity. Now that really is dramatic, isn't it? Because everybody presumably had thought that he was awake but not aware and had no real awareness of the outside world, and this changes things, doesn't it? It does change things. Um, it, it told us two very important things. One is that you know, he is aware, he's conscious, he knows what's going on around him, but also he's able to interact with the outside world, and that's really the important new thing here. He can convey yes and no responses to, um, to, to give the answers to questions. You've asked them fairly limited questions. What um, might you use this for in the future? Well, there are, there are a number of uh, very immediate applications. So, for example, one could ask the patients whether they are in any pain because we have no other way of, of knowing that information. And um, you could use that to administer painkillers where necessary. Could this be used before any decision was made by doctors and relatives about whether to allow a patient to die? Well, uh, it certainly could be used in that context, and that is, of course, you know, one of the applications that, that we would consider in, in the future. But you know, there are many other hurdles that we're going to have to overcome beforehand. At the moment, all we know is that this, this patient could answer yes and no questions. We don't know whether 
you know, they had the, the cognitive competence to be able to make tricky decisions about whether they should live or die. And, and really, one would need to make absolutely sure that that was the case before you use this, this technique in that context.